Dr. Julie Webb of litcentric.com and welcome to this brief writing webinar. Now I designed this webinar for elementary classroom teachers in grades uh, two through five, but of course adjustments can be made for different grade levels and different teaching contexts. Now I've been with the National Writing Project as a teacher consultant at UC Davis for many years and I know how writing instruction can be very challenging even in the best of circumstances. And I'm concerned about our distance and hybrid learning models and how writing instruction might take a back seat when really I think we should move it up into the front of our instruction and top of mind. So I've designed this webinar to provide you with a system that you can use to provide really high quality writing instruction as well as reading instruction in a distance learning or hybrid learning model. So let's get started. So I created this webinar uh, really designed for teachers in grades two through five, so that upper elementary group students who um, have some writing experience but definitely need a lot of instruction and support to continue their growth as writers. And I've also designed a system really to help you think through what that live instruction piece might look like, whether you're using a Google Meet or Zoom or some other type of web conferencing software, and also what the independent piece might look like for students using maybe like Google Classroom or some other platform like that. So I've designed a few things to share with you today, and uh, most of these things are freely available for you. And I didn't design them with a specific software or program in mind. They really are flexible enough for you to use in a lot of different ways. And you can certainly use this as a guide to structure your own instruction, um, even if you're using resources that are slightly different than the ones I share here. So let's take a look here at some resources that I have for you. Along with this video, there's a link to download I have two sheets here. They're both in a single PDF and the first page is the one on the right that says distance learning writing instruction and the second page is actually the graphic that you see here on the left. So we're going to use this as our guide to think through our lesson sequence um, for you know maybe four or five six days of instruction and writing and then um, this will also be a great resource for you later on as you go to plan some of these things and think through how this might look with your students. So the thing to know uh, right now about this lesson sequence, you can see on the writing instruction sheet here, on the left-hand side we have sequence. And we have day one, two, three, four, and beyond, and then a final day. And I organized this, it really is a system because it helps you um, really create a sequence of events that you can rely on, that can provide routine for you and your students. And there's a way to differentiate and support students that's built right in. So students can also finish the task, at, uh, writing task at different times, which in the classroom is sometimes not the easiest thing when students finish at different times. But in distance learning or hybrid learning, it's really not as critical that they finish all at the same time. So we've got some nice flexibility built in here. So as far as the sequence goes, I also didn't design it with a Monday through Friday mentality because first of all, that may not be how the sequence works for you. But also, we know that good writing instruction, especially process writing, um, it doesn't work perfectly in a Monday through Friday situation where on Monday we start an instruction and on Friday we're done. Good writing doesn't turn out that way. Writing instruction doesn't work that way. It needs to be more fluid and flexible than that. So sometimes, uh, if you're doing a particular lesson and you only need three or four days in the sequence, well then great. Other days you might need, or other weeks, you might need six or seven days in the sequence. It just depends on what you're asking students to do. Either way, the sequence itself really doesn't change. Just the length of time that you devote to different parts of it may change based on your students' needs and their grade level, age level, and their level of development. So the basic structure here, I have sequence on this page, but on the left, as I said, is just a very brief graphic representation of what that sequence looks like. So I want to give you the overall kind of view of that. And then next, we're going to go into an actual sample slide deck that you can use. And I'll give it to you as a sample with a link included um, so that you can see how this preparation works and how you execute on this. So if you look at that graphic on the left, starting with day one and also on day two, you're doing live whole group instruction. So you're using Zoom or Google Meet or some type of web conferencing software to accomplish that. On the first day, you're sharing the mentor text and you're asking students text-dependent questions to help them process and comprehend the text that you've read. On day two, you're gonna continue discussing that text, but you're going to be building a bridge chart together. Now, if you are a regular listener of my podcast, Let's Centric Radio, you already know what a bridge chart is. 
But for those of you who, uh, maybe that's a new term, probably because I coined the term, so you haven't heard it anywhere else necessarily. But a bridge chart is really a charting experience. It's an active, interactive experience where the student and teacher work together to process information, in this case, from a mentor text, and they use their background knowledge and their ideas and experiences and um, lots of listening and speaking, lots of discussion to come to collective meaning together. And through those interactive discussion experiences, you populate that information onto your chart. And that chart then becomes a reference tool for you to use and the writing instruction and the writing tasks that you're going to ask students to do. So the, the chart itself is really important, but the actual act of charting together as a group is really where the magic happens on a bridge chart. So that's going to happen on day two. And I'll show you if there's a digital way to do that. And there's also a more kind of regular traditional way that we might do that. And we'll talk through both can be equally effective in this situation. On starting on day three and really all the way through the final days, they look very similar. Students are actually working on the writing task that you've given them. Now in day two, you end your session by letting them know what the writing task is, and they have it printed there for them on their slide deck so they can interact with that. And as students start to work on that task, you can actually drop in and see their progress, you know, as it happens, especially if you're using something like Google Classroom, which is what I'm using here, just because it's a free, um, it's a free tool for you to use. You can certainly set this type of thing up in any other learning management system that your district has offered you. And uh, as you see student progress and you provide feedback for them, you can start to see who some of the students are who may need some additional small group instruction. Likely, as you get to know your students this year, you're already going to know some situations where students are going to need small group even before they start the task. So starting on day three, you can start pulling those kids into those small, um, small groups using Zoom or those other platforms and um, help them get started, do guided writing with them if you need to, providing any type of support to help them get started and work on that writing task. And because we have flexibility in this lesson sequence, we can pull all sorts of different small groups um, until that assignment is complete or until you've created a deadline that's reasonable for your students. So that whole group really gets us all, you know, on an equal playing field in the situation where we've all heard the text, we process it collectively, and so students benefit from the background knowledge of other students as well as their own. And the writing task is a chance for students to apply what they know and what they've understood from the text in a meaningful writing activity. And the small group support is right there, as well as the constant feedback from you in the Google Slides or another type of platform. If you take a look at the distance learning writing instruction page you see here, but on the right hand side, this side says preparation. So I wanted to give you a simple checklist so that you can see some of the things you need to think about in order to get ready for a lesson sequence like this and some of the tools and materials you're going to need. Um, and then also some of the things you'll have to do on days one and two versus days three and beyond. So on the preparation side, you can see you're going to need to prepare the lesson slide deck. And I'm going to show that to you uh, shortly. And because I'm providing the link to that slide deck for you to download, then you can use that slide deck as a template for future lessons as well. So that'll save you a lot of time. There's also a section for materials and software. So again, you need like a virtual classroom, you need some kind of web conferencing software, all those types of things. I also recommend that you use Litcentric Radio Lessons. Remember that's my podcast and each episode, I focus on a different mentor text and I outline some of the text pendant questions and bridge chart that I would do with students as well as a writing task. And you can use the lessons from Litcentric Radio as the curriculum to actually populate the slide deck or whatever materials that you'd like to use to send out to your students for your remote or distance learning. Also on the preparation side are the things that you need to do to prepare and execute on days one and two, such as scheduling the virtual meeting your students are going to have, pasting the link where they need it to be, some of those kind of just nitty gritty things that need to happen, and also how days three and four and beyond might look whereas you need to make sure that you're reviewing the writing tasks or leaving feedback, things like that. So let's actually take a look at what the slide deck looks like, and then you can get a sense of how all of this plays out and what your students actually see and engage with. So as I mentioned, I'm going to provide the link to this particular slide deck for you to use and uh, get a sense of how it works, um, what some of the materials that we have in here, 
And again, this is based off of episode one of Lit Centric Radio. This was a lesson we did on Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, and it was all about using persuasive techniques um, and analyzing what the pigeon says and does in order to persuade us. So this is, again, it's just an example, but if you log on to litcentric.com and in the shop tab, you'll see um, a button there for writing, and that's where this growing lesson bundle uh, lives. And right now, um, next week, we're actually going to be launching episode 50. So there's 50 different lessons for you to choose from. And you're going to see some of your favorite read alouds in that collection, as well as some new ones you probably haven't tried before. So for this one, let's take a look at how a student might see this. Now, you can see over here, students wouldn't have these first two slides. I'm not going to include those on your lesson. Um, but here, you can actually see what the students would see. Okay, so we know what episode we're doing. I like to label this really clearly. This isn't even so much for the students as it is for me, so I know exactly which lesson we're working on. And then I like to place the link that my students will need to have the live call or lesson with me. Remember on days one and two, we're gonna make sure every student does that, and we would actually paste that link right here. But I like to use that same link for all of my meetings with students if I can. And if I paste it here, that means that if I let students know, hey, remember we're going to meet you know, on day four in your small group, make sure you have this part ready, or we're going to be talking about this, use the link in your slide deck to meet us. That's a, that's a nice thing for students to have. They always know that it's there. And of course, it's smart of you to provide them the link in other places as well, depending on which learning management system that you're using. So. Here's an example of questions and answers. Now in the Litcentric Radio lessons, there's always a collection of text-dependent questions. And uh, the questions are really geared to get students not only to process the text, but also to prime them to think about some of the things that they're going to be asked to do in that writing task in the end. Now students don't know what the writing task is yet, and they don't need to, because you're going to kind of prime them for that through these questions and through the discussion that you have. Now here, uh, on days one and two, again, this is the live group instruction they're doing with all kids, and your students don't actually have this slide deck yet. You may show them the slide deck if you share your screen, but in this case, they actually don't need to get their hands on it yet, and I really want them just doing the activities, the live activities with me, and not trying to look ahead or, or mess with other parts of it, because and you really want the live instruction to be really powerful and motivational and really, really critical for student success later on with these tasks. I don't want everything to be asynchronous necessarily because this webinar is really designed to show you how you integrate live instruction with some asynchronous learning as well. Um, and so this question and answer slide, originally it'll be blank, right? Because I haven't asked the questions yet of students. So here we have four text-dependent questions. They come right from the lesson from the Centric Radio's growing bundle. One of them is, why does the driver ask us to guard his bus? So you pose that question to students in that Zoom call. And I like to do breakout rooms where students have to talk with one another about their answers. And then you can listen in on a few students at a time. And we come to consensus as a group about why we think he asked us to drive the bus or guard the bus. And so here, I actually document what's, what our consensus is. So whatever our answer is, we, he knows the pigeon wants to drive it. So that's why he's going to do that. or what, That's why he asks us to guard it. So I ask the question, we come up with our answer, and I go ahead and document it. You can do that right here on the screen and share it with students and write it down. You can just jot it down on your own on a piece of paper, add, add it later. Whatever you're comfortable with is fine. It's more important that you ask the questions and have students have rich discussions and guide their thinking a little bit through that process. But I like to post these later on, whether you do it again at the same time or you do it later. Either way, um, I think it's great for kids to refer to because it can help them think through, um, again, and prime them from that writing task for success later on. So once you've asked those text-dependent questions on that first day, and uh, document them, then you're done with your live instruction for the day. The next day, we move on to the bridge chart. So we're gonna revisit the text. Sometimes you may choose to reread it or reread sections of it. Uh, you may choose to even revisit the questions they answered the day before. But the day two section is really all about creating the bridge chart together. So remember, we're gonna help students process and under try to understand the text that we read through some further discussions and building this chart together. 
and the same chart is going to be used to help them to answer um, and do the best job they can with the ultimate writing task. So it really bridges understanding between reading and writing. Here on this slide, we actually have a digital version of the bridge chart. Now again, this is the same bridge chart that I explained in episode one of the Centric Radio podcast. And um, if you purchase those lessons, this one's actually available for download for free. So if you download it, you'll see there's text dependent questions, sticky notes that you can print. There's an actual sample photo of a bridge chart that a class created. And there's the actual writing task with writing paper that students can use. But here, we were able to take this bridge chart and turn it into a digital one where students actually have to sort their answers. So here are some of the things you can see here that uh, the pigeon actually says. And, um, you know, one of the things is, oh, I thought he'd never leave. Well, what type of, um, what type of persuasion is he doing there? Well, maybe we call that, oh, he's making connections because he leans in and tries to um, kind of show that he's relatable or that we're on the same side. Here he says, hey, I've got an idea. Let's play drive the bus. I'll go first. Again, he's trying to kind of invite us into doing this activity together. So maybe we say, oh, that's making personal connections. So again, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this particular lesson because you can listen to the podcast and you can download the PDF yourself as well as, of course, this slide deck. But this bridge chart wasn't hard to put together because it really is a sorting activity. Some bridge charts aren't going to lend themselves as well to that idea. And so you may choose just to do an actual uh, bridge chart live with students where either you create it together and you type on the screen or you actually um, you know, have a piece of chart paper there and you're documenting certain things and writing things down. And then you just take a photo of whatever you've completed together in that Zoom call and you post it here into your slide deck. So either way, it doesn't matter because research has shown that bridge charting works equally well um, whether it's done in this kind of virtual or technical situation, or if it's more, um, you know, kind of traditional with chart paper and markers. Either way is going to be effective because it's really not about the chart. Remember, it's about the charting experience. So it's those discussions and sharing of background knowledge and our understandings of the text that are going to make the charting experience really valuable. So either way, whether you do, you turn the chart into a digital version or you post this later on um, when you've made together on paper. Either way, just make sure students have access to that because we want them to refer to that for their writing tasks. That's the whole point of that being there is to help them process and prime their thinking and then use as a resource later. Something I failed to mention here, you can see in um, the bottom here in the notes, I always try to put directions for each slide just in case students forget what to do or something looks a little bit different than they're used to, or if they have a parent assisting them and they don't understand you know, what the task is, or they weren't there for the live instruction, right? So it's helpful to have that there for students to refer to. And I like to always put it in a bright color like this so that they see it really clearly when I share the slide deck with them. Okay. So same here, take a look at the bridge chart, use the chart to complete your writing task. So finally here on this next slide, we have a resource of a video of the read aloud. Now, uh, remember you're gonna be doing, you're gonna read the book aloud to them definitely on day one, and you're gonna revisit it um, or even reread it on day two. But once students move on to day three, they no longer have access to that text. Now you can record yourself like on a Zoom call or something, but you're also recording all the conversation and the text pendant questions and things, and it's a little more disjointed than just reading the book from you know cover to cover without stopping to ask and answer questions. So what I suggest you do, because I expect most of your students will not have their own copy of every single book that you share with them, that you either find a video on YouTube where someone's read the book or just create your own really quickly. And uh, just record yourself reading it, just you know set up your camera or your phone you know, over the top of the book and just do a, a simple rereading of it. No need to stop and ask questions or anything like that. Just give them the straight up book so that again, they have this to refer to when they go to do their writing. So by the time students get this slide deck on day three, they now have access to the text dependent questions and answers that they um, did with you so they can remind themselves of that. They've got either a bridge chart to do interactively or the copy of the one that you did together. 
and now they also have the text. So there's a lot of rich information here for students to use by the time they get to the writing task. So remember, starting on day three, students are expected to start their task. Now you may decide to pull small groups. You may have a group that needs assistance from you just to get started. You may want to have all your students get started, and then as you check in on them, then you decide to pull different groups for different reasons. There's lots of ways to support students with that. Some of your students might just need written feedback, and so I'm actually creating what I call feedback stickers to use that will help save you some time and give students some helpful guidance as they write um, without having you needing you to you know, make these big long files or really long comment sections. Um, it should save you some time and again, just keep students kind of on the right path. Meanwhile, you're collecting evidence of who needs further support, whether it's um, again through further written feedback or maybe you send them you know, audio video file feedback or you pull them for live instruction again in small groups. So students here go to this slide, which is the writing task. So this is an opinion argument task. And this is exactly how this task is written if you download the lesson from Letcentric.com, the Letcentric Radio Growing Bundle. So it says, choose an activity you are not allowed to do on your own, such as baking a cake or flying an airplane. Persuade your reader to let you take part in the activity. Provide strong, logical reasons and try some emotional appeals as well. Use the examples on the chart to help you. So this particular task, I didn't have to modify it at all in a distance learning situation. Some tasks you might decide to do that. You also might decide to change the language a bit if you want to make a slightly different genre you want students to write in. Or um, I always try to think about in particular if I have students with some academic language needs, whether they're English learners or otherwise, I might need to even simplify, simplify my directions further or make sure everything's you know, in a particular tense or things like that, or I'm using really familiar vocabulary. So of course, feel free to make adjustments to the writing task language or you know, the slightly, or the outcome that you're looking for to make sure that it's really designed well for your students. But if you think about those text bonnet questions we asked um, that you can look through in that lesson plan, you'll actually see how our bridge chart and our talking about the text has helped students get ready for this particular writing task. Now here, it says type your response here, use additional slides if needed. So if you actually put that right there, type your response here, now students have a text box they can immediately type in and they don't have to now drag the text box around and kind of do some of those things. So anytime I want students to type in a certain area, just make sure it says type here or something like that so they don't have to do that extra level of work. And again, down here, here are the directions we want students to follow. Now, for some of our students, this will be enough for you know, several days of writing instruction because with some written feedback from the teacher, maybe some small group instructional support, um, you know, they've probably done a good job on their writing task or hopefully written to the best of their ability, which is what we're always hoping for. Now, some students, because you're monitoring this, and you can click on their, you know, in the Google Classroom or other learning management system, you can see work in progress. You can see maybe who's, you know, ready to finish or who finished and, and submitted their assignment. So if students do finish early, I like to ask them a couple extra questions. Now in the Litcentric Radio lessons, there's always at least six text-dependent questions to ask for every book, and some texts actually have a lot more. So I like to make sure for my live instruction that I really focus in on the particular questions that really need teacher support and, and really benefit from discussion with other students. And uh, especially ones that I think are priming us for the bridge chart and the writing task. Now that doesn't mean to say that there aren't lots of other text pendant questions I could be asking of students, but I don't have enough time in those Zoom calls um, you know, to ask every question. That would be an awfully long Zoom call, and I want to make sure I'm staying on point and my students stay engaged because that time is really precious with them, that face-to-face -face time. So that means I go through those text pendant questions and I decide which ones are the best for the live instruction piece, and any that I don't use, I save for this purpose where I just tack it on to um, additional slides, and any student who finishes a writing task early I go ahead and ask them to complete um, these particular questions and answer them on their own. So here I just have a photo of the text. How do the pigeons' feelings change in the book? Now the student is going to have to think carefully about this question 
and they can also go back here and watch the video of the read aloud because to answer that question you really are going to have to think through the whole text right from beginning to end how does how do his feelings change what is what is the evidence of that now again type your response here it's already delineated for them where they need to be typing and this um, in this case we have a second text pendant question that we didn't use in the live call and so I just again added it here now this time I took a picture of um, the part of the text with that where this text dependent question applies in the let centric radio lesson as I mentioned you can print the text dependent questions on sticky notes and stick them right into your book exactly where you need to be asking that question and the great thing is is on the sticky notes it tells you exactly which page number you should be asking that question so it's really, really helpful. So I knew exactly which page this was because the text pendant question sticky note told me. So I took a photo of it, put it here, and then added the question, why does the author include text on only some of the pages? And then again, type the response here. Now, this kind of question, I think is kind of a complicated question. You could have several different answers to this question. So I think it's really worthy one for students to process especially students who are strong enough writers to do a writing task independently, there's no reason that we can't challenge their thinking a little bit further and help improve their comprehension with questions like this. I don't think it's really, I don't think it's additional busy work at all. I think these are really valuable questions and they explore some different literacy ideas that maybe we couldn't do in our whole group instruction just for the sake of time and focus and engagement. So hopefully you find these lessons really helpful to you and you find this template helpful to you um, as you move forward with your writing instruction. Now the link I'm going to provide is going to actually show you um, this, this slide deck, which is identical, except that um, I added in here some comments just to remind you of kind of the purpose of each page and you know what needs to be happening and what you need to be doing on each of these pages so once you have that reminder and you go through and you make you know a new slide deck with a new text or from a new lit centric radio lesson all you have to do is just resolve these comments and then you can cut and paste um, or copy you know this different this different slide deck and use it to help you build your future lessons so hopefully those comments are helpful to you just to remind you real quickly what that looks like and then you don't have to go through the webinar again and, and uh, try to remember all those different pieces. So let's take a closer look at those feedback stickers that I mentioned previously in the video. This is a product for sale at lecentric.com and it's designed to help you save time while supporting your students and encouraging them during the writing process. Now if you purchase this file you'll get a copy of this slide deck on Google and you can see here we've got the cover slide, we've got directions for uh, what to do, or how to actually use these stickers easily, a sample of what they might look like, and then you can see here uh, what some of the stickers actually look like. They're organized into the six traits of writing, so ideas, organization, and voice, word choice, sentence fluency, and conventions, and there's five stickers for each of those traits. There are also stickers here that are blank and some directions here at the bottom for how you can create your own stickers to give even more pointed and specific feedback to your students. So let me show you actually how these stickers work. So let's take a look at how easy it is to leave student feedback that's meaningful and really helpful and encourages students to write using the digital feedback stickers. So let's say this is a student piece of writing that I have. Now, students can either type their answers, especially for older students, but in this case, this is a second grader at the beginning of the school year who is working with paper and pencil. And so in order to use this on a Google Doc or a Google Slide like this one, we'll need to take a photo of that piece of writing and then upload the photo onto the slide. And that's something the student can learn to do and a parent can certainly help with or a teacher can help with. So let's say I've read through this uh, student work and I wanna give them a compliment on the conventions that they used. So I go to my file that has all of my feedback stickers and I'm going to scroll down to these stickers here that are all about conventions. And let's say I wanna say that the student is doing a good job with their punctuation. So I'm gonna select this sticker and copy it and go back to my student sample, go ahead and paste that sticker onto the page. 
Now I can move this sticker anywhere I like and definitely resize it if I want to. And I can actually place the sticker right on top of the student work and point to directly what I want them to look at. If they're also using uh, typing, I can even highlight a section if I want to, if I need to be really specific. But these stickers are really designed more to continue or encourage students to continue to write. In the meantime, I wanna make sure that I'm meeting with them throughout their writing process and I'm conferring with them and giving them even more specific feedback. But to encourage them along the way and to make my work quicker and easier and make it easier for me to monitor progress, I can give these feedback stickers in a really timely way. So I can float it on top of the writing. I could also leave it outside of the writing like this. They can even exist in the margins this way as well if you're using a tool like Google Slides. You can also resize them to make them really large if there's a point you're really trying to make. Or if you want to leave multiple stickers, you may want to uh, decide to do some smaller than others. But it's really quick and easy to do. The student gets some encouraging you know, feedback along the way. They know they're on the right track in a particular way. And then when I meet with them and talk about their writing, then I can get really specific with a teaching point that's gonna be really helpful for them. So last but not least, I wanna make sure you knew where to find some of these additional resources, including the example lesson that I drew from for our slide deck in this webinar. So if you go to my website, litcentric.com, go ahead and click on the shop tab. And the shop tab is going to take us to this page that has all these different categories of information. So uh, what we're going to look for is actually in the writing tab. And if we click on that picture, it's gonna take us to uh, this online store. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see those digital feedback stickers that we just took a look at, as well as the Letcentric Radio Lessons Growing Bundle. Now remember, Letcentric Radio is my podcast where I feature a different read aloud or mentor text in each episode, different picture books that students enjoy in the elementary grades. And I teach you how to maximize uh, that particular lesson or that particular book through really comprehensive text-dependent questions, discussions with students to promote reading comprehension, build background knowledge, build a bridge chart together, and then move that into a writing task where students can extend their comprehension, extend their learning, and also be a valuable assessment tool. So if you click on this growing bundle of lessons, it's gonna take you to a page that looks like this one. And if you scroll down, you'll see some information here about the lessons, and you know quite a bit now because you've seen the example um, in this webinar. But if you scroll down, you'll notice um, we've got a collection here of uh, some different files that are available for free, um, as well as different seasons of the podcast. So season one, episode one, is Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, and you can download that PDF for free. And again, that's where I actually based the webinar lesson from. There's also some free videos here for you to see what those bridge chart look like in season one. And if you continue to scroll, you'll see again, it's organized by different seasons, lessons from season two. And um, if you do a one-time purchase for the Litcentric Radio Lessons Growing Bundle, you get access to now 50 lessons and that grows. Every other week we add a new episode and that bundle will keep on growing and your price won't change. That one-time access, that's all you need to do. And you'll get every single lesson of Let's Centric Radio podcast and all available for download, including the text pendant questions, the example of the bridge chart you can create with students and the writing task. And you can pull everything you need from those and create any remote learning, distance learning, hybrid learning lesson that you need to do using the system that I taught you in the webinar as well as use these resources when we return into the classroom. So hopefully that's very helpful to you and you learned quite a bit in our webinar today. Please don't be a stranger. Listen to Litcentric Radio on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you like to listen. Make sure you drop me a line, julieweb at litcentric.com is my email, and you can find me everywhere on social media at Litcentric. All right, bye for now. Have a great day at school.